and thank you for tuning in. My name is Dana McKellar Intaka, and I am here this evening. It's Sunday evening, and I have a little bit of time before I go back to work, and since everyone is home with their children, I want to share some books with you. This book is child appropriate, and since many children don't have anyone to read them a bedtime story, I wanna read them a scientific bedtime story. This book is an advanced level book, and it has 10 articles written by 10 different scientists to talk about the pros and cons of stem cell research. So for the children who want to know all about stem cells, mom and dad, here's your time. Sit the children in front of the camera, and here we go. The book is by Sue Bradford Edwards, Engineering the Body, Stem Cells. Chapter one, new skin, new life. Seven-year-old Hassan has a deadly disease. It made his skin fall off. He blistered easily. By 2015, most of his skin was gone. He was in great pain. Doctors struggled to keep him alive. They decided to try an untested treatment. Usually treatments must go through strict testing. They must be proven to be safe. Some skin diseases cause painful blisters and increase patients' chances of getting infections. Only then can treatments be used on patients. But Hassan's treatment was allowed because he would die without it. Doctors took cells from Hassan's remaining skin. They fixed the cells so the cells no longer had the disease. Then the doctors grew the cells into the skin tissue. They did this using stem, skin stem cells. The body has many types of cells. They include muscle, bone, and blood cells. But stem cells are different. When a stem cell divides, the new cell can become stem cells or they can become other kinds of cells. This ability makes stem cells important. They can make the body heal. For example, Hassan's stem cells grew into healthy skin tissue. Doctors covered most of his body with the tissue. Over the next eight months, they watched his progress. The new skin attached to his body. It could heal from cuts and bruises. And here we see the pictures of the different types of stem cells. Regular stem cells that become specialized cells and then more stem cells. Hassan was able to go back to school. He could play with the other children. Stem cells had helped Hassan heal. By studying stem cells, scientists hoped to treat other diseases. Stem cells come in two main types. One type is adult stem cells. The cells are found in various parts of the body. When adult stem cells divide, they can replace damaged cells. For example, adult stem cells in muscles can become new muscle cells. The second type of stem cell is embryonic stem cells. An embryo is an organism at an early stage of growth. It contains stem cells that can become any other kind of cell. This flexibility makes embryonic stem cells valuable to scientists. Stem cell differences. Embryonic stem cells can change into any other kind of cell. A whole human body forms from the stem cell of an embryo. Adult stem cells can only change into certain types of cells. For example, blood stem cells can only replace the types of cells found in the blood. And there we have a picture of embryonic stem cells and then adult blood stem cells. Chapter two, studying stem cells. Alexander Maximo discovered the term stem cells in 1908. The Russian scientist was studying how blood cells divide. 
he saw that one type of cell could divide into red or white cells. He called this cell a stem cell. Other scientists took stem cell research further. One was Dr. E. Donnell Thomas. This American scientist studied bone marrow. He wanted to cure leukemia. In this disease, bone marrow makes unhealthy blood cells. Thomas believed bone marrow transplants held the cure. In 1956, Thomas had a patient with leukemia. The patient had an identical twin. The twin donated blood marrow. Thomas transplanted it into his patient. The transplant was a success. The patient's body formed healthy blood cells. Two Canadian scientists made the connection between bone marrow and stem cells. In 1960, they transplanted bone marrow cells into some lab mice. Then they examined the mice. They found tiny bumps. There was one bump for each transplanted bone marrow cell. The scientists studied each bump. They found early red and white blood cells. These cells would mature into red and white blood cells. The scientists realized they had found stem cells. Stem cell research continued. In 2006, Japanese scientists were studying mouse skin cells. They inserted genes into each cell. The genes reprogrammed the cells. The cells didn't divide into more skin cells. They divided into embryonic stem cells. Scientists had turned specialized cells back into unspecialized stem cells. Scientists are now able to make stem cells in the lab. Scientists work with stem cells to find new drugs. They study stem cells to cure diseases. Scientists hope that stem cells will one day create organs for transplants. How it works, lab-grown stem cells. Scientists can grow stem cells in labs. This process is called cell culture. Scientists grow cells in a plastic dish. They fill the dish with a nutrient-rich mixture. The mixture contains what the cells need to divide. A good nutrient mixture is important. The wrong mixture will stop the stem cells from specializing. Specialized stem cells can help treat diseases. If bone marrow stem cells cannot specialize, they cannot produce blood cells. They cannot treat leukemia. Scientists start by placing stem cells in the dish. Then the cells divide. New stem cells spread across the top of the mixture. A few embryonic stem cells can produce millions of new stem cells. Lab-grown stem cells can be frozen they can be shipped to other labs. Once thawed, they can grow new cells. Scientists use these cells in experiments. Using stem cells. Scientists use stem cells to treat many diseases. These treatments are collectively called stem cell therapy. The most common treatments are bone marrow transplants. These transplants treat leukemia. They can treat several other cancers too. They also treat some blood diseases. Here you see a doctor removing cells, bone marrow cells for a transplant. Cancer treatments can destroy bone marrow. After the treatments, the patient needs a bone marrow transplant. Bone marrow for transplants can come from two sources. It can come from a donor. It can also come from the patient. In the second case, a doctor removes healthy bone marrow cells before the patient's cancer is treated. After the cancer treatments, the doctor returns the healthy cells to the patient through an IV tube. The healthy cells reach the bone marrow. There, they make new blood cells. Not all bone marrow transplants are successful. Sometimes transplanted cells attack healthy cells. 
The person's skin blisters. The patient bleeds internally. The patient can even die. Mesenchymal stem cell therapy can help. The stem cells for this treatment come from bone marrow. The stem cells are frozen until needed. Once thawed, an IV carries the cells into the patient's blood. The stem cells improve healing. They reduce swelling. They give the patient the chance to recover. Other stem cells come from umbilical cord blood. After a baby is born, doctors can collect blood from the cord. Scientists use these cells in research. The cells are like bone marrow stem cells. They can be used to treat anyone. They can treat blood diseases. They can also help patients recover from cancer treatments. Now I have to tell you children that there is controversy regarding this type of usage and when the story is over, you can ask your parents to explain to you what your family's philosophy is and what your family's beliefs are about this controversial issue. Scientists often use embryonic stem cells in research. They fertilize human eggs in a lab. The cells divide. At the beginning of the third week, the cells are called an embryo. Removing the stem cells destroys the embryo. If an embryo continues to grow, it becomes a baby. For this reason, some people are against this type of research. And your parents will gladly discuss that with you at the right time. Future treatments. Science can be very complicated and there's a lot of history that is involved with medical science and there's a lot of politics that's involved in medical science. So again, ask your parents about their religious and their political beliefs. Scientists study stem cells to make new treatments. One goal is to mend the spinal cord. This bundle of nerves carries messages from the brain to the rest of the body. However, a back or neck injury can damage the spinal cord. This damage can cut off the flow of messages. It could leave the person unable to walk. Scientists want to help people again, want to help people to walk again. In experiments, scientists inject people with stem cells. They hope the stem cells will create new nerve cells. These cells could repair the spinal cord. Then the person would be able to walk. Scientists also hope stem cells might someday cure type 1 diabetes. In this disease, patients' bodies do not make insulin. This chemical is needed to process sugar. Scientists have gotten stem cells to make insulin producing cells in the lab. Healed. In June 2016, Jake Javier jumped into a swimming pool. He hit his head and was paralyzed. He couldn't move from the chest down. The next month, Jake took part in a stem cell trial. A doctor injected 10 million stem cells into his spinal cord. Jake can now use his arms and legs. Some of this progress could be natural healing, but Jake believes the stem cell therapy helped him heal. However, more work is needed before people can be treated. One day, scientists will be ready to inject these cells into a human. The cells will make the insulin the person needs. Scientists also want to grow whole, whole organs for transplant. But organs are complicated. They can't be grown in a dish. They need a frame. In one experiment, scientists use hearts not suitable for transplants as frames. They removed parts of the cells of these hearts. They left cell walls and veins. These parts made frames. Scientists injected stem cells into the frames. After two weeks, heart cells had grown from the stem cells. The resulting organs weren't complete hearts, 
but they could beat. Scientists will continue studying stem cells. These unique cells may be the key to healing injuries. They may also treat more diseases in the future. Focus on stem cells. We have a glossary here. If there are any words that you didn't understand, we'll go over some of those words. Bone marrow, soft, fatty material inside the bone where cells are created. Donor, a person who provides tissue or an organ for transplant. Fertilize, to cause an egg to begin developing into a new young animal or human. Genes, tiny parts of cells that tell cells how to perform certain functions or that cause the body to develop certain traits. Mature, to become fully developed. Reprogrammed, programmed again or differently. Transplants, surgeries in which an organ or tissue sample is removed from one person and placed into another person's body. Umbilical cord, the flexible structure that connects a fetus to its mother. Unspecialized, not used for a specific person. I truly love science, and I have since I was a little girl, and I hope that you do too. Again, this book is called Engineering the Human Body, Stem Cells. The author is Sue Bradford Edwards. Your parents can pick up a copy from your local library, or if you would like to purchase a copy, this is published through the Focus Readers Navigator. Focus Readers are located in Lake Elmo, Minnesota. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you've enjoyed this story. Enjoy the time at home with your family. Good night.